I've been doing photography now for 11 years and one subject I shoot more than any other is seascapes. Today I've teamed up with Park Cameras and Nikon Europe to share with you all some of the compositional techniques I personally use in my seascape photography and the ones that I think can really help make an image more visually appealing. Now before I share all the composition techniques with you all, I just wanted to say that today I will be shooting with the Nikon Z6. I've been using this camera now for six months and I absolutely love it. And combined with this camera today, I'll be using the 24 to 70 millimeter lens. Now when it comes to seascape photography, I like to have a lens that starts at a wide angle focal range and can zoom in a certain degree so that you've got some flexibility and you're able to create several compositional opportunities especially when the light is changing quickly and as the Z6 has a full frame sensor 24 millimeters is a perfect wide angle focal length to start with when it comes to seascapes and obviously zooming into the 70 millimeters gives me some scope and some change so that I can create different compositional opportunities without having to move too far as I'm sure you can see, today is not the best of days weather-wise. It's very drizzly and foggy. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk around this location, find examples of the compositions that I'm going to teach you, and then showcase some photographs that I've taken in previous shoots that also showcase these techniques. So let's get started. Now the first compositional technique I'm going to share with you this morning is one that I'm sure pretty much all of you have heard, and that is the rule of thirds. Now, although it has the word rule in its title, this is not a composition technique that you have to do all the time. In fact, there is a lot of situations where the rule of thirds is not the best technique or the best composition to choose. However, it is a great way to add depth and interest to your photographs. Now, as I've already explained, this morning the light is pretty bad. It's not the best for seascape photography. It's not misty enough to give enough atmosphere and it's not clear enough to have nice clear skies or nice clouds to add interest to the images. However, by using the rule of thirds, I'm able to include more interest in my frame, which should in theory lead to slightly more interesting photographs given the unfavorable light. Now what the rule of thirds is, is basically where you position the horizon in your image, either in the top third line of your photograph or the bottom third line of your photograph. And the majority of the time you will put this in the top third because you want to include as much landscape and sort of foreground in your image as possible. But if the sky is kicking off and you've got amazing color and light, then you'll want to include more sky in your photograph and therefore the horizon will be on the bottom third line of your photograph. And as I said, the great thing that using this technique does is it allows you to add depth to your image because it allows you to include a foreground, a middle ground and a background. Now a mistake that a lot of people make when they first get into photography is positioning the horizon bang in the centre of their frame. And as I'll showcase to you with this photograph here, that can lead to a very sort of flat image that's quite displeasing. However, if you move your camera down slightly to include more foreground and have that horizon on the top third line, you then have an image that looks like this, which has got more depth to it, and I'm sure you'll agree it looks more 3D as well. So yes, the rule of thirds doesn't need to be used in all situations, but especially on days like today, where it's dull, it's disinteresting, it can add more interest to your image. A little side note, one of the best ways to do the rule of thirds is actually to get really low to the ground. Put your tripod down as low as it'll go, because that way you're able to include more foreground, such as rocks, driftwood, pebbles, whatever is on the coastal spot that you're at. And then it also gives you a slightly different viewpoint as well, so you can create something a little bit more unique. Because at the end of the day, we all view the world from eye level. So if you can get down low to include your foreground, middle ground and background, more unique image, more depth, more interest. It's a win-win situation in many occasions. There is one time, in fact there's a few times when I will position my horizon in the centre of my frame and one of those times is when I'm shooting reflections. Now today the sea isn't quite calm enough for reflections and there also isn't many pools of water just now because the tide is in. 
and we've not got beautiful clouds for that reflection. So I'm going to showcase to you what I mean by this in some photographs I've taken in the past. But the great thing about positioning your horizon in the centre of the frame when you're doing reflection shots is it creates a mirror of what's happening in the sky. Now especially if you're shooting around sunrise or sunset or if it's during the day and you've got some really interesting clouds, having that reflection in the water can look amazing, like really really beautiful and like I say it adds a mirrored effect which is really natural I guess to our eye because it's symmetrical and mirrored. When it comes to seascapes one thing I will say is try and always ensure there's something else in your frame other than just the reflection. Now what I mean by this is if you have a reflection on its own no matter how beautiful the sky is and how beautiful that reflection is it will look quite flat unless you have something in your frame that adds a focal point. So here at the coastline that could be a rock, a pebble, some driftwood, a boat and what that does as I say is it adds a focal point for the viewer to look at and gives you that 3D effect. Now if you're photographing inland, which this video is not about, but if you're photographing inland you can get some cracking reflections of things like mountains where you don't always need that focal point. But here at the sea, having that focal point just adds interest and really makes your reflection shots pop. Now a compositional technique that I use all the time because it adds a lot of interest to your image and allows the viewer's eye to really be taken through your image is leading lines. Now leading lines can be created in many ways. You can find lines within rocks, you can find the sweeping coastline where the sea meets the shore can act as a nice leading line. You can have a leading line created by a cliff's edge or a leading line can be created by some driftwood leading the viewer's eye into the image. But leading lines, as I say, is a fantastic way to allow the viewer's eye to go from the front of your photograph into the back of the photograph, which ultimately tells a story, which is really what you want to do when you're shooting any landscapes, never mind seascapes specifically. So leading lines, another great way to add interest, to add depth, to give you that 3D effect, and just to create a really visually appealing image. Another technique I like to use is framing and what this is is where you have a subject matter on the left hand side of your image and the same subject matter on the right hand side of your image. In the case or the situation this morning is I've got these two rocky outcrops in front of me with rocks on the right and rocks on the left and what that does is it allows you to create a sort of mirror and also create a sort of frame within your photograph which allows the viewer's eye to focus in on whatever is in the centre of that frame. Now today this isn't going to work because we've got the very moody atmospheric sky and there's nothing going on but if you're photographing a sunset or a sunrise or you have a subject in the centre of that framed object such as a boat or a person it can work really well in drawing the eye in to that focal point. Now if you're photographing objects at the seaside, a great way to position them in your frame so that they're interesting is to have them on the third line. So a bit like the rule of thirds situation where you're trying to decide whereabouts in your frame to put your horizon. Also it's important to think about whereabouts in the frame you're putting the object you're photographing. So for instance if you're shooting a lighthouse in the sea or a really interesting rock, you sort of want that rock or that lighthouse, that object, whatever it may be, to be sort of on the third lines within your photograph. And what that kind of does is add balance to your image and again it's more visually appealing. You find if you start placing objects out with the third line you can often lead to a bit of an unbalanced image and it's a little bit more unnatural to the eye. There is however I find one exception to this which I'll go on to in the next point. But here is some photographs of me showcasing what I mean by positioning an object or a subject on the third line. Now, as I said there are some times when I don't do this, there's exceptions to all of these rules and it can be quite difficult especially when you get into photography of learning what works the best visually but rather than putting your object on the third line if you want to create an image of symmetry especially if you're shooting at a location where you've got a static object with the same image or the same landscape around it 
centering that object bang in the center of your frame is a great thing to do because what that does is it allows you to have a, a complete symmetrical image. Now this doesn't happen all that often on rocky shores where I am today because the whole scene is different no matter where you look but if you're photographing on a beach for instance you could have something like a beach hut bang in the center of your frame with exactly the same thing on each side of it whether that's sand dunes, grass, pebbles, whatever it may be but it's the same thing on each side of the object so it's a nice balanced and symmetrical image. And finally, if all else fails, shoot the horizon. Now what I mean by this is there's times when I've gone down to this, this shore, down to the beach, down to the rocky outcrop, and I've really struggled to find leading lines, to find foreground interest, to find symmetry, to find an object to place on that third of my photograph or to find a frame and sometimes especially if the light's amazing and things are kicking off all around you you can start to panic and think I can't find a good photograph so shoot the horizon and what I mean by this is if you've got a really nice sunrise sunset or beautiful sky that tells a story on its own sometimes you don't need all the other things within the frame you just need that sky because that sky is so stunning so what I do is I zoom into the horizon and I photograph the horizon on its own but like every other thing in this video there has to be something else on the horizon other than the sunset to give it interest so whether that's mountains a boat going by some birds flying past whatever it may be there needs to be something other than just the sunset or sunrise or beautiful sky to add that depth and that interest but if all else fails and you've got cracking light or cracking sky around you and you don't want to miss it just zoom in and shoot the sky because as I say it can sometimes be so beautiful that it can tell a story on its own and actually on mornings like this morning where the weather's pretty rubbish just shooting the horizon works really well because you've got this misty atmospheric clouds over this beautiful rocky outcrop So that's just a number of compositional techniques that I personally look for and do when I'm out at the sea. Now as you will have seen, like every rule and every technique, there's exceptions to them. And one of the hardest things I think about doing seascape photography, or any landscape photography for that matter, is learning what compositions will work well with each time you go out. So what I mean by that is every location, every scene, every light condition works better in a different composition or a different technique. But the only way you can learn about what's going to work is if you get out and practice and all the techniques I've sort of outlined in this video are ones that work well quite a lot of the time. So get out and practice them next time you're down at the coastline and hopefully it'll give you something to work on, something to try and hopefully one or two of the techniques in this video will help you go home with more visually appealing images and you'll have more depth, more interest and just a generally more pleasing image. As always, I want to say a huge thank you for watching. If you get to the coast soon, enjoy! And I look forward to hopefully seeing you all again next time.